This is a short video in which we will deal with the uh, classical administrative management style. It was developed by Chester Bernard and it's known as the acceptance theory of management. Now, I said it's quite a short one as you can see from the bottom right hand corner of the uh, slide in front of you. There are only 15 slides in this session. It's an important uh, topic nonetheless. It's one of the classical views of management uh, together with the bureaucratic and the scientific management uh, views. So it's one that we should be familiar with um, but it's actually quite a straightforward piece of thinking and we can look ahead quite simply in this video. So first of all Chester Bernard, well he was the president of the New Jersey Bell Telephone Company so that to some extent influenced his thinking about organizations uh, both in terms of how the the company in which he was engaged was uh, set out, uh, how it was structured and also the technology he was working with to some extent influenced him. Uh, he introduced the concept of informal organizations in his publication uh, of the, the functions of the executive in 1938. Uh, quite a famous text and here he was trying to look at formal structures for organizations and contrast them with the, the more informal structures that also seem to emerge. His aim was to create a theory about organizational structures. He viewed an organization as a communication system which as I said is not surprising given the, the nature of the company in which he was working. But he, he saw communication systems as very important within companies and part and parcel of communication systems are of course people and how people deal with each other. So here he was trying to look at uh, ways in which people will accept orders from other people will we'll accept instructions and directions from others and what is it that determines their acceptance of instructions from others. So that was uh, part of his focus in looking at organizations in this way. He suggested that it's important for managers to develop an environment uh, where there is a, a sense of common endeavor and cooperation is encouraged. In other words, the managers should demonstrate to the workers that they're all in it together. They're, they're all interdependent. The managers need the workers, but the workers need the managers. Uh, there's a, a mutuality involved in their, their work. And they're all working towards a common goal to achieve some target or to achieve some output. He introduced the acceptance theory of management. Uh, this theory emphasized the degree of willingness individuals accept authority from superiors. It, it looks at the, the willingness of people to accept authority. Why do, why do workers accept the authority of the managers? Well, I suppose we could look at this in, in various ways. Uh, the workers need a job, they need the income at the end of the week or the end of the month. So perhaps that's why they're willing to accept the authority. Or it could be they're willing to accept the authority because they trust the manager. Or it could be because they recognize there's a, an interdependence between the two of them. Both of them need each other. Uh, they may recognize the manager because the manager has an expertise and a skill in the particular task and therefore is speaking from a position of authority, a technical authority. So it could be related to the status of the manager within the organization or it could be related to many other factors. He also implied that a manager's capability to express his or her authority is dependent on the employee's zone of indifference. So, in other words, the employees must 
uh, be prepared to listen to the manager and take instructions from the manager because uh, there there's nothing in a sense they can do about it this is these are the rules this is what is required so they must be compliant they must must agree they must go along with the instructions that is the job now the acceptance theory of management well bernard believed that there are four elements that determine employee keenness to accept authority from their employers so this is specifically his views about why employees are willing to accept authority from employers so from superiors i should say employees understand communications they 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 understand uh, what has been said so they're willing to accept the instructions because the message is clear they understand what's required they have there's a clarity about the communications and they understand it so they're willing to accept it because it's a clear instruction it's not vague so they're not going to find it particularly difficult they understand what's required employees accept the communication as being linked with the organization's purpose so the the communication is related to the organization and therefore will be accepted it's not uh, just a whim on the part of the manager this is coming from the organization and the organization requires this to be done the manager is merely passing on the instructions so to that end they are not taking instructions from the manager they're taking it from the higher authority from from the top management from the organization the manager is merely passing on what is required the manager is doing a job as well so the employees are more willing to accept it the employees acknowledge that their actions uh, may be dependent or affect the needs and desires of other employees so they may be willing to accept what the the manager wants the instructions because they don't want to upset their colleagues their colleagues may be adversely affected if they don't accept what the manager requires so if if they vary the instructions they may adversely affect their colleagues and they work with their colleagues they have perhaps some sort of social interaction with their colleagues so they don't want to upset them the employees are mentally and physically prepared to accept orders from their superiors they must be prepared to accept the orders mentally they, they must be in that frame of mind that they are prepared to accept orders and instructions and they must be physically capable of performing the instructions the instructions should not be um, extreme they should not uh, place the worker in harm's way or in uh, some precarious situation there should be clarity about the instruction and the workers should be physically capable of carrying out precisely what is required and also have the mental uh, predisposition to enable them to carry it out and be successful so these are the the four ideas that Bernard has about the acceptance theory but as we know from wider literature and and various videos on the course there are many other aspects associated with the manager employee relationship that need to be considered this is one perspective uh, the literature has moved on in terms of uh, sophistication different ideas different possibilities and a more elaborate response may be made nowadays but for its time and in its time this was a good start to try to explain the relationship between employees uh, say on the work um, on the work floor and the managers and see what determines the success of the managers in getting the job done and in working with the employees but as I said nowadays we would have many other functions in built in here and there are many other perspectives that need to be taken into account but 
it's important that we understand this particular one. So that's all we're going to deal with in this video. So let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.